What's going on everybody? It's Alex from Everything for iPod. Today it is March 14th, 2013, which means that at about 7 o'clock Eastern Time in Times Square, New York, at the Radio City Music Hall, Samsung announced their new phone, the Samsung Galaxy S4. So in this video, I'm just going to be recapping the event and telling you exactly what the new phone is all about. First of all, as far as appearance goes, it looks very similar to the S3 as well as the Note 2. The design is very similar and it looks pretty much identical even though there is a little bit of a size change. It is 7.9 millimeters, which is a little bit thinner than the previous generation, the S3, and it is 4.5 ounces, so a pretty light and thin smartphone with a big screen as well. As far as the screen goes, it has a 5 inch, or to be exact, a 4.99 inch screen measured diagonally, so very similar to the Note 2 just a little bit bigger than the S3, and that is a Super AMOLED display coming in at a full HD resolution of 1920 by 1080 That's about 441 pixels per inch, which means that you are not going to be able to see any pixels. If you ever have held an iPhone 5, that has a, a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. So if you take the iPhone 5, it is even higher quality than that. So it does have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It's going to be great for watching movies with very vibrant colors and a great pixel density as well. As far as pure specs go, the S4 does have 2 gigabytes of RAM and it also does come in 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte models. It also does have a micro SD card slot which allows you to expand the storage at any time up to 64 additional gigabytes. As far as the processor goes, there are two different models, and the one you will get will depend upon where you live. In North America, you will experience the Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro processor, which clocks in at 1.9 GHz and is a quad-core processor. If you live somewhere else in the world, you may get the Samsung Exynos 5 processor, which clocks in at 1.6 GHz, but is a massive octa-core processor. Really awesome that we have an octa-core processor in a phone, however, you will not be able to get that in all regions. Now it seems that with every new phone release, we have updated cameras. That seems to be the number one thing that phone companies are updating when they release a new product. The rear-facing camera is a 13 megapixel shooter, which of course does record in full 1920 by 1080 resolution. As far as the front facing camera goes, it's not great, but we do have a little bit of a better camera than in the S3. We have a 2 megapixel front facing camera. Now besides just the actual cameras being updated, we do have a few new features added to the camera applications themselves. First of all, when you use the rear facing camera, there is an option to take over 100 pictures in 4 seconds, and it will stitch those 100 pictures together, choose the best ones, and create a super realistic and accurate photo, which should be much better than just taking one photo. There also is dual camera mode, so you can take a picture at the same time with the front facing and rear facing camera and have them both on the same image, and that also works in video chats, which I think is really cool. So if you're video chatting, the person that you're video chatting with will be able to see you as well as what's around you through the rear and front facing cameras. Samsung is also pushing their S features such as S Health, which will help track obviously your health, your fitness, and your eating habits. Also S Voice Drive, which is basically an enhanced navigation system for when you drive your car. S Voice Translate, uh, which will basically um, just translate what you say to a different language using your voice so you no longer have to type in a translate. And it also does include Google Now with Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean. So you do get full Google now, which is basically, if you don't know, a competitor of Siri. A few other really cool features, you do have NFC, Bluetooth 4.0, and an IR blaster. So you will be able to use your phone as your remote for your TV. As far as data speeds go, you have super fast LTE as well as 3G HSDPA. So you will get very fast data speeds on your network. Now to power everything I just told you about, the Samsung Galaxy S4 does have a 2600 milliamp battery, which is slightly increased from the 2100 milliamp battery on the Samsung Galaxy S3. So you may not see a huge difference in battery life as there are some new features and more power that the battery has to push to. However, you will see a dramatic increase in battery over something like the iPhone 5, which is only rocking a 1440 milliamp battery. So you do have a pretty big battery in the phone. As of now, there's no official date set. However, Samsung has said that the phone will be coming out at the end of April in black as well as white on 327 different carriers in 55 countries. 
There's no official price set yet, but if it's anything similar to the S3, we should see the price coming in at around two or $300 on a new two-year contract. Personally, I've been using iPhone and iOS as my daily device for the past few years, ever since the release of the iPhone 3G. I do prefer iOS on a tablet, however, I do think I want to make the switch over to Android, at least try it out for a little bit when the S4 comes out. So let me know if you'd like to see coverage, I definitely want to try and get my hands on one when it comes out. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you make sure you don't miss out on any of my future content. As well as if this video helped you out and informed you in any way, don't forget to hit that like button as that's the number one way you can support my channel. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, again, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with a friend, subscribe. Thanks, and I'll catch you in my next video.